Okay, welcome. So today we're going to be talking about the importance of shoes and choosing the shoes that are correct for a healthy foot. So to begin with, and this is one of the biggest problems that we see in clinical practice when it comes to restoring normal structural health, restoring optimal sports performance, and actually overcoming chronic pain and dysfunction and deconditioning that occurs just in so many people living in a difficult modern world these days. So it's important to understand that actually right from the outset, there's no shoe that you can put on your foot that's going to improve its function. That is just such a critical thing to understand. Let's remember that as human beings, our feet have been evolving for around about 7 million years. That means that they have become incredibly good at what they do. They are fine-tuned, finely designed to meet all of our needs, meaning that your foot is tasked with incredibly challenging um, circumstances. It needs to be able to support your weight through a whole load of different motions, whether you're running, walking, um, sprinting, climbing, jumping, swimming, whatever it may be. This foot has to be flexible, strong, able to sense the environment beneath your feet and rapidly adapt to any kind of change in pressure that gets put through it. So they have a very, very difficult task. And the only way that your foot can do that job properly is if it's strong, healthy, flexible and well conditioned. Now what tends to happen is that from a young age, we imprison our shoes, uh, our feet rather, in shoes that are too tight, poorly fitting, inflexible and overly cushioned. Now this results in a foot, unfortunately, that then deconditions over time, eventually leaving it unable to perform its important task for your human body. So let's remember as well that these feet are the foundations upon which all else sits. So if you are struggling with some sort of pain or dysfunction or injury, uh, we have to look at the feet. Everything is so interconnected and it all does actually really begin down on the feet uh, in terms of getting the robustness back into your body when you're weight bearing. Now, let's examine a couple of really important terms to understand when it comes to the way that our structure works and the way that our brain controls our body. Now, these are neurological terms. The first one is proprioception. Now, proprioception quite simply means joint position sense. So anytime your joints move, we fire off this proprioceptive nerve information, which travels up your spinal cord into your brain, telling your brain what is going on with your joints and allows your brain then to adapt and understand accordingly based on the information it's receiving. The next important term to understand is kinesthetic sense. Now your kinesthetic sense is your brain's overall appreciation of your body's general movement pattern. And kinesthetic sense is so critical because this is where the robustness comes in. This is where your ability to adapt and remain injury free and stay strong and robust comes from. So if you have a joint problem, if you stop these joints moving, and they're unable to fire off this proprioceptive information to the brain correctly, your overall kinesthetic sense is decreased, the brain does its best but can't do the job perfectly. Ultimately, you end up with injuries, pains, and some sort of chronic dysfunction in most people's cases. So, natural alignment, movement, and stimulation of the foot neurology is absolutely a critical part of getting optimal health and function back to your body. So, let's say right from the start, uh, there's no, nothing you can put on the foot that will improve its function. Second of all, what you do put on your foot can either have a little bit of impact or it can have a massive impact upon the health of your structure. So before we get into what it should ideally be, let's have a look at a few key terms that are important to understand when it comes to choosing a good shoe. Now, this is not a good shoe, but we can use it as uh, a way uh, to describe all of these key terms. Now, the first term is called stack height. Stack height, very simply, the height from the, where the shoe hits the floor to where your foot hits the shoe. The rear stack height of this shoe is around about one and a half centimeters. The forefoot stack height on this shoe is around about half a centimeter. Okay, so one and a half at the back, half at the front. That leads us to the next term, which is called drop height. Now drop height is a difference in height from the back of the shoe to the front of the shoe. In the case of this shoe, it would be around about one centimeter in drop height. The next thing, or the next term, is the forefoot, or the foot box. Okay, now the foot box is the amount of room and the shape 
of the, of the shoe that allows your foot to move. If you're curious, the foot box on this shoe is very limited. You can see how it turns in here, causing the toes to squash in. More on that in a moment. The next measurement, the most common one that people know of, is obviously shoe size. And then the next thing to understand is the flexibility of the shoe, how much it twists, how much it bends in ways that are natural to a human foot. Okay, so those are the basic terminology that we need to understand. Oh, one other thing. All the technology, in inverted commas, that gets put into shoes needs to be considered as well. Now, very often that will take the form of two um, different guises, the first of which is cushioning. Um, so the amount that your your foot squashes into the shoe would be cushioning and there's all sorts of technology uh, from air, from pump, from gel packs that are popped into shoes these days in an effort to dissipate the shock of running and sports back up into the body. By far and away the biggest problem in terms of shoe technology these days is the arch supports that are popped in these things. Okay, now the most common arch support that is put in is medial arch or inner arch support in the middle part of the foot. Now, let's take a moment to explore this because it's so very important to, uh, to understanding why shoes can mess you up. Now, for some reason in recent decades, this issue of your foot turning in, which is known as pronation, has become to be seen as, uh, as a problem. Okay. Nothing could be further from the truth. Pronation is a natural part of, uh, of the movement of a human frame. It's there, importantly, to dissipate the forces that occur when you run and jump around, particularly on a barefoot structure. So remember how intricately designed and perfectly adapted the, the um, structures of the foot are to meet the human needs. So what these, what these arches do is they stretch and elongate as you put weight on them. And there's actually three different arches in the foot. So that when we run around, what happens is a sort of an elastic spring-like effect between all of these arches and the tendons and the muscles of the foot to dissipate the shock and to cause a spring-like effect to propel your motion forward. So that is a very safe way of, of controlling human weight and ground reactive force. It's when everything is aligned properly, it works perfectly, it doesn't need to be messed around with. Now, there's a difference between pronation and overpronation. Okay, overpronation is a real issue. It's surprisingly uncommon, however, but overpronation is usually caused by poor foot mechanics, i.e., bones and ligaments that are out of their normal position, old injuries that haven't healed properly, and very commonly, weakness of key muscles that support the foot thanks to these old injuries that were never addressed properly and didn't heal well. So those are separate issues. You really need to see a professional who knows what they're doing and is able to assess foot dysfunction and then be able to put it right. But you can't put it right unless you know what's going on with it. And it's not just as simple as sticking an arch support to push that arch up and uh, somehow miraculously improve its function. In fact, this makes no sense at all if you understand how an arch works. So an arch works by having a strong front and back section to it. That enables it to basically sustain a lot of pressure coming down. Now, the worst place to support an arch is in the middle. In fact, if you put some weight up on the keystone section of an arch, which would be the midfoot, all you actually do is weaken you know, the natural mechanics of that arch and leave it ineffective at doing its job. So gee, just even from a mechanical point of view, it makes absolutely no sense to stick an arch support in the foot and say that you're improving its function. Another key thing to, to understand when it comes to arch support is that all you can do, whether it's with an arch and a shoe or whether it's with orthotics, all you can do with these supports is actually trap the foot in dysfunction you can stabilize to some degree a, uh, a, a really poorly conditioned foot with an orthotic or an arch support, but you can never improve its function. It will never correct what's going on there. And all you end up doing is keeping people trapped in dysfunction by putting these things in the shoes. So remember how important this mechanoreception or proprioceptive that proprioceptive nerve information is. Your brain thrives on it. In order for your body to work well, you have got to have feedback from these joints of your foot up to your brain. You stick an arch support or an orthotic in there, what happens is you lose the movement of these arches. 
that leads to a decline in the neurological efficiency of these nerve signals and a gradual deconditioning of the foot. So whilst you actually even may support a, 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 a a poor health foot for a little while with an orthotic, actually over time it will get worse because the actual real cause hasn't been addressed. All you're doing is stabilizing a symptom. And any time you just treat symptoms and don't address the cause, it's usually a bad scenario long term. And it's absolutely true with foot mechanics.